Hey, good evening everyone and welcome back to uh, my YouTube channel. I was gonna say welcome back to all these games I played. Um, no, I just, I love doing live stream. Uh, it just, it's real, it's raw. You know, there's no script. Um, I have talking points. Sneezing a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what caused me to sneeze. Let me drink some water here. Yeah, it's so good to be back. Uh, live streaming is a lot of fun. Uh, I love doing it because it's raw. You you have a couple of bullets to talk about, uh, and then and then you just go with it. Just go with it and let it let it let it swing. Just swing for the fence. You know what I always say: fortune favors the bulls. You know. And uh, yeah, just and it's it's a lot of fun. Today I don't even have script, uh, and not script. I don't even have bullet points. I don't even have points to, you know, to keep me on track, to keep me on line. So I don't even have that. So it's just kind of like this is really swinging to the fence, uh, just just ad hoc, just you know, as it goes. You know, I think to me it's that's what makes live stream fun. If, if there's, there's too many shows out there already. You know, if you want to watch Professionally Done, you just go watch the professional show. Ramsey and uh, all these other, you know, finance shows and stuff like that. But if you want to watch, you know, some some YouTube are very, very good. They do very good programs. But for me, man, it's raw. It is raw. <laughs> and there's no, you know, and there's no sugarcoating it. You know, I'm just telling the way it is and then I not take the hit from it. Uh, Marching band, a cool sound. That's interesting. Some battle music from WoW. I love that music. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't play. Yeah, I should download some WoW music. I don't mind playing it. Battle, marching bands, a cool sound. Yeah, it's good to see everyone here. Uh, there's some people I recognize and some other I don't know. Um, there's a guy who just who said hi to me, but I don't know him. Plus and code. Uh, hello, Khmer. I, I, that's the first time I've seen you. Likes for you. Hello. Carl7181, it's good to see you. Bobby J, Nicholas Palmer, it's good to see you. All right. I'm going to go ahead and switch music here. Oh, man, that's a hard kill. Right, I'm going to put level 5. I, I just, I have a hard time doing live stream without music, so that's why I gotta do music. All right, so the music in the background, this is the MechWarrior 5 Mercenary game. So uh, uh, for those who wanna know where the music come from, they're, they're a very heavy metal-ish sound. And, uh, oh, plus code is random guy. Okay, I did not know that. Right. Why don't you change your Discord name to Plus Code to match your YouTube to make it easy? If you take a loss when you get uh, so this is Jim Brickley. I'm reading his t uh, chat here. If you take a loss when you get out of stock, you should wait 30 days due to the uh, wash effect that will cure. So be careful. Uh, Jim, I have no idea what you mean, but. Uh, yeah, I think I've done that. I sold and then I bought. Uh, so I've done that many, many times. Uh, I will just keep buying until I hit my stopping points. Yep. All right. Yeah. So we, we don't have a lot of topics. There's only one topic I asked in Discord. So for those who hang out in Discord, one of the questions I ask is, um, you know, tell me, you know, let me just read it, the actual question. <laughs> I forgot already. Um, wow, somebody wrote some long, long stuff here. I didn't get a chance to read any of the stuff. Oh, Pat and I wrote some long stuff. All right, so what did I wrote? Um, Sam wrote some stuff. Oh, hey, so everyone live streaming tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern. Today topic, what did you learn since you start your investment journey? Here's, um, here's some example of my answer. All right, so that's really the only topic we have today. And then after that, I want to go and review to set condition uh, why we do these stream in the first place. And uh, that is to prepare us for this coming week. So uh, I forgot to pull my portfolio. Um, shoot. 
Oh, you know what? I can still pull it. Oh, right, yeah. I can still pull it here. I was, I was, I normally pull for my Charles Schwab before the show, and I totally forgot about that. Okay, so here is my, here's all my. You problems. need to stay ahead in business. What's that noise? Use data analytics to do things like speed up prototyping. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how oh, AWS can that's transform your Yahoo. business. Yeah, that's right. No. Unite on screen. I gotta figure out where that noise coming from. That's strange. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I can pull my Yahoo and we'll, we'll talk about that. So one of the things that we have to talk about here is, you know, this week is pretty down. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a couple of, couple of stocks that I like for this week that I'm gonna go and buy just because it's at 52 weeks low. And, uh, and I want to just take a look at it. This is just my proposal. Uh, but uh, I would love to hear your, 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 your suggestion because everything is down right now. Because everything is down right now, I'm looking at to move some money around for my external asset move in here. The problem is I should have done this like two, three weeks ago and take a while to move these money around too. Uh, so I uh, now I kind of regret that I didn't do this. So I'm gonna wait until everything get transferred, move, and then I may be able to buy some more share. Uh, I mean, when you said how, how down you are, I'm down 13%. This is the most down I ever, uh, or the, the lowest point. Uh, so I'm down about $7,000 in Yahoo here. Um, and this pulled right straight from my Charles Schwab account. So this is a pretty accurate number. It's off only like about a couple pennies. But I'm down by 13% right now. And um, and so if the S&P 500 continue to go down, this thing gonna go down. Now, it's really only one portfolio. If my Tesla come back up, this whole thing will be green. Uh, well, not green, but at least it's not gonna be down as much. It's really just my Tesla because I own a large chunk of my portfolio in Tesla, so, and that's the problem. And and the big problem with Tesla is that it's 1332 and my cost average is like 1598. Believe me, I've been buying at 1332. I've been buying, I just, I just don't have an, I, I, I have to wait until Clip paid me. I have to wait until the end of the month uh, for me to, you know, to put a large chunk like a thousand five hundred dollar in there. I can't do it until uh, until I get paid, which is the end of the month. So if this price stay until the end of the month, then I can buy. If this price go up to fourteen dollar, uh, I'm probably not going to buy. I'm, I'm I I have stopped buying Tesla when it hit fourteen. So uh, because at fifteen. Um, yeah, I was trying to do this cost average down thing, but I'm gonna hold Tesla for a long, long time. I'm at the point right now, I don't need to buy at $14 again, ever again. Uh, so I think I'm good. I'm good from this point because I got enough dividends. I got enough, I already made $2,000 just a dividend alone. All right, so uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the group here and we're gonna talk about some stuff. So what did you learn since you start your investment journey and here's some example. The biggest thing that I learned for me, uh, that it it's actually just reconfirm what I believe. I, I did not know this until I actually went into it. <clears throat> At the end of the day, um, I, I confirm, I reaffirm, I guess, confirm or reaffirm, I don't know how you want to do it in the English language, that income strategy is still one of the best investment strategy for new investor. So you're brand new. That's what that's what the the channel's dedicated to. That's what Discord is dedicated for. It's all new investor and and low income uh, low income. You know, people just starting out. So when you're new, you you're like, okay, what do I buy? You know, you know, and what do I need to invest on? And I'll tell you, if you're not sure what to invest, invest in income uh, strategy income. So that means stocks or ETF that pay dividends and go after the income, trying to get as much income as you can. Um, normally, when you hear the hear this concept, it's usually toward the retirement people. So at the beginning of the at the beginning of in your, in your 20, you're supposed to go all in in these growth stock. You know, put all into growth stock, 
and then when you when you're ready to retire it, then you transition to income. I don't. I, I never buy into that concept. So now I, I, it's it's actually what I believe. It's the the opposite. You need to go in income first, and then do the op, do the other way. Go the other way around, because you have income to do it. What I mean by that is, I started with zero dollar, and nine months later, I able to get two thousand dollars of dividends. That's dividends money. That's dividend money that for the rest of my life, or that I will continue to get as long as. As long as the price stays the same, as long as the the dividend payouts stay somewhat similar to each other, I'm gonna get roughly around that ballpark, and that's income. If I didn't if I didn't go to the income route, I would own forty. I I I don't think if I make forty six thousand because a lot of these are are my dividends, so I probably have like maybe forty thousand dollar of something. You know whatever it is, SoFi or you know Neo or uh, Rivian, Lucid Technology, um, you know Tesla, uh, Plantier AI, all the AI stock, whatever whatever I bought. If I don't buy dividends, it would literally just be that, and there was no no dividend return. So it's all growth stock, and I have no dividends return. Even if I buy all crypto, let's say I take forty six thousand dollar, I buy crypto. Guess what? From January all the way till now, I have forty thousand dollars. Just nothing but, just that's it. I have no income. So every it, the only income, the only contribution that go into is my contribution that I put in one thousand every month, one thousand every month. I don't think I don't think this amount is going to be forty six thousand. It's not even forty thousand. It's probably I, I didn't do the math, and uh, you know I I probably say maybe in thirty thousand, because a lot of it is my contribution. And then plus the dividends is why it's become this way, uh huh. And uh, so that's why I think dividend income investment is so so important. Okay, that's 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 my that's my opinion. I, I'm gonna throw it back up to a couple of the guys here. Hey, I'm open the floor to all of you. Just go ahead and uncue the mic and then uh, and just jump in. So what what's your take? What do you think? What what do you think is your uh, the, the question is, what did you learn since you started your investment journey? What I learned was income strategy. What did you learn? Come here. This is Dwayne. I'll go hey, ahead. Dwayne. I'll go ahead and start people off here. Okay. Um, I think one of the biggest things I've learned is patience. Uh, you need to take your time to watch situations and learn everything you can before you jump into a hasty decision. Don't let the fear of missing out cause you to, to jump into something that maybe you shouldn't. And don't let it cause you, you know, the fear of losing money cause you to sell out of something in a hasty decision. Take the time to watch what's going on and make a better decision instead of a hasty one. Well, I, li I, I like that. So, what, where, uh, what, what was the 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 engine behind that? What's the background behind? Why uh, was it some experience that you learn, or you know, just just over time of the, the years that I've been doing stuff, um, reflecting on the the times where I made an emotional uh, buy versus a logical buy, and whether or not I actually was able to profit from that. Yeah. And, and most of the time where I had something that was a, a bad move, it was because it was more of an emotional or compulsive move rather than a well thought out one. Interesting. I, uh, how, how do you define, you know, I, you brought a good point here. I, you know, I hear this a lot of time. People talk about emotional buy and logical buy. I guess I gotta I gotta get some context to that. Uh, you know. Well, um, so imagine you being a new investor. Yep. And you go on and you see uh, this YouTuber guy come here, and he's he's all happy about this this fun Tesla. Yeah. So you all in into that fund because you saw some YouTuber guy, you know, count it, but you yeah. know nothing about that. You just heard a big amount. You did no other research other than the one YouTuber guy, and you all did. <laughs> That's an emotional buy where you got excited over something yeah. and you just jumped in. 
you know, especially if you jump in feet first. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it kind of ties into, you know, what I often tout is the best piece of advice I've ever gotten in investing is if you're not sure you should sell, you should sell only half. And, and you can apply that to anything you do. Yeah. If you're not sure you should buy, buy only half. You know, if if you're not sure it's the right time to sell, well, only sell half. And that way you don't miss out if it has a turnaround or, you know, if you, if you think a, a stock's going to run, but you're yeah. not sure, only buy half of it. That way you don't miss out, but you don't risk it all. Yep. No, it, that, it, right on that patience mantra. You brought up a good point because I I thought that, matter of fact, when I first came into the investment journey here, my investment journey, I thought that everybody is a lot more savvy than I am. So they all at another level. So I'm I'm coming from a ground level trying to figure it out. So I'm trying to learn how to swim in this muddy water, and you're all like on the other side of the river, just you're having barbecue. You you, and what I found out is it, that's not really the case. It seemed like we're all swimming in this muddy water and we're all just struggling and some people swim better than other and some some have a little floating device and uh and and some is closer to the shallow on the other side and some is more on the deep end on my side you know so it, it's it's that i thought that people are all going to be different so when i make videos on, on things like this I, I was very shocked to find out that wait man why why would you buy Tesla without doing any research. I mean, I did research before I bought Tesla. You you bought Tesla because I said so? Because I think I think it's a great stock and and I got a good catchphrase, you know, fight the dragon, you know, uh, fortune fade the bowl. And you literally sell your shirt and, and just did it. You know, like, with Jimmy? Jimmy, I always like to tease him because he literally sell his t-shirt and and uh, his uh, his liver and everything to, to buy this one fund. Um, but you know, I I I I find that very shocking. Did, did you find that shocking, Dwayne? I well, first of all, Jimmy, I'm not making fun of you. I was just teasing you because we we, we inside ballpark, <laughs> inside joke. Um, for those who don't know, Jimmy is one of our one of our uh, good friend here in in our Discord. Um, Dwayne, did you find that you find that, uh, or you 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 already kind of know that was happening um no i didn't i don't i don't know if i knew it was happening mm. yeah this is a very good uh very good discussion i i uh i can go on and talk about this subject uh, the whole time so i want to give uh everybody else a chance if you want to come in and just jump in and and um uh, and give out your lesson learned since you started this investment journey. Um, Phantom 2-2, this is the first time. Uh, do you want to jump in and say something about? All right, Ross of NH, New Hampshire. Hey, Ross, how's it going? Hey, I'm, I'm here now, I'm sorry. I was eating popcorn and <laughs> I couldn't get to the cell phone because my hand was greasy. Okay, we can hear you loud and clear. So, um, some uh, lessons that I've learned: exchange, exchange traded notes. Um, didn't didn't know that, even though I read the prospectus, I kind of forgot this. Yeah. ETNs, you have got to watch them. When they fall below five dollars, they can be liquidated, and you can you can get get wiped out pretty hard. Um, both unconventional wealth ideas and myself learn that e e etn or oh, that okay yeah that's a little more advanced for me <laughs> is, is that what you say etn hello ross called um morl and there was one called reml oh there's uh, there's one that some people still Phantom, invest in phantom i apologize give me a give me 10 second uh because ross is trying to key the mic but we can't hear ross uh, so Ross, I'm going to mute you for a second, uh, or you can just mute yourself for a second because your mic is not working. You, there's no sound coming through. All right, I'm going to I'm going to mute Ross for a second. Um, yeah, so uh, Phantom, I apologize for that. Go, uh, so uh, 
ETN, where we were we, talking about ETN. You, so you learn about ETN, and what's the other one? <laughs> oh, um, well, the other thing is I, I do not invest in penny stocks. <laughs> okay, okay. It, even if you do as much research as you want to and you think it's a great company, yeah. oh, my Lord, those those things can take a dive down and, and just sit there or, or get wiped out. It could take take years for that, that penny stock, that company to recover that you bought a penny stock in. So Wow, that's, that's interesting. The very first YouTube video... Uh, so I didn't know who Warren, I didn't know who Warren Buffett is. I I've uh, heard the name, but I was thinking he's an actor. But that was Warren Be Betty, so it was like different. I I thought I thought Warren Buffett was an actor. I, I have no idea. So when I started my investment journey, uh, I was when I was doing research, I was uh, I I saw somebody mention Warren Buffett say these things. He just quoted. So Warren Buffett uh, talk about buying penny stock warren buffett and J uh, charlie munger charlie munger his buddy that the two buddies there and they bought they say they make their fortune on this uh penny stock and uh so i didn't know what they were talking about so i had to go find that video i finally found the video they were talking about it. when they were talking about penny stock back then we're talking about world war ii korean war type you know we're talking about back in the 40s and the 50s when they were you know young and 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 throughout you know, I, I would. So when I was watching that, I was going like, I don't know how that apply to today, modern time with the technology so fast, the information flow is so fast. Like you can buy and sell trade just using Robinhood and it's done in a matter of a second. Vices, you have to call a broker or you have to go to a broker's office, you know, uh, downtown Boston somewhere. Like I grew up in Boston. You have to go to downtown and go to the Merrill Lynch office and put your money in, you know, just to talk to the guy. It's like talking to a lawyer, making an appointment. That that might be true back then, and I can see why penny stock, and, you know, like, but today you can do research pretty quickly. You can be like, okay, what's, what's going on with this company? And when I was doing research on the penny stock, what I found out is that majority of them are singly focused on something. If they, if they built a widget, like a device or whatever device it is, that would their whole company is bet on this device. Uh, like, uh, what what's that lady that she she does uh, she she came the blonde hair girl? They made a movie. She's in jail now because she has a blood test sample, and uh, but it's gonna be a fake device that can't really test the blood. And uh, so she put her entire fortune, entire her, you know her premise, all on this device to test the blood and give you you know give you a list of problems. And of course, the device doesn't work. And then, uh, but think about it: billions of people who's not billions of people, billions of dollars went into this uh, investment, and it turned out to be a scam. So, yeah. So the single stock, I think it, I think it worked very well back in the day before technology. Now with technology, you can do research on it and go like, well, I don't really believe in that device, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy it. So that's one thing I learned. I don't know. You, you find is that the reason why you don't? Go into single stock phantom. No, I I would I didn't say single stock. I said penny stocks. No, that's what I meant. I'm I'm sorry, penny stock. I'm I'm sorry, penny stocks. Well, I I was trading penny stocks probably in the early two thousands, and okay. yes, you can make a lot of money real quick. But it's just so disappointing when you lose money. So it's it's just not worth it. Yeah. So Ron Jones just told me it was the Theranos, Theranos company. That's that was Elizabeth Holmes. Uh, so so how are you? Are you been you no know, majority of us majority of us are pretty new. Are you are you a new investor? Or you've been around for a while, or where are you at in the investment cycle? Are you at the beginning or the end or in the middle? Oh, I've, I've been investing. I've been in and out of the market for years. I just, I kind of go through phases. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I used to invest in mutual funds, like in the 90s. Yeah. And then I sold those. And then I started buying like Exxon. And I actually owned Enron. And I was buying a house in California. So I sold all my Exxon and Enron to buy the house. And thank yeah. God I did because <laughs> Enron crashed. <laughs> Wow, you've been around well, a long made, time. Yeah, oh. I had I had, made, I had made a lot of money on Enron because I think it doubled. Okay. 
but I mean, I've, I've made some mistakes and, and along the way as well, I got caught up in the dot com boom and yeah. lost money there. That was not fun. What, what, what? So I've kind of, kind of diversified a little bit. I had a little bit of real estate. I yeah. had a little bit of conservative investments and then I, you know, these yield max funds just look a little too exciting. So yeah. had to jump in, but not, not with both feet like you did. <laughs> well, I, I had to, I, 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 you know, this is when I, when I came up with the concept of fortune fade the bowl, I saw, I saw it, you know, I saw the writing on the wall and I said, okay, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go all in. I'm just going to go all in because I need, I need to be able to generate income so I can go buy some other stuff. I can't buy any stuff right now. And so I, and that, that's why I was, that's why I went in like that. Um, do you, do you have any, any recommendation advice for us, you know, newbie, you know, like. Always have a plan B. Okay. So like. For me, my my plan A was investing myself because we didn't have the a 401k or thrift savings plan in the military until and then I I you know until the what mid 2000s. Yeah. So then, so real estate was my thing, kind of like you. I got moved around. I bought a house. Yeah. Found a property manager, and went to my next duty station and forgot about it. Oh, then the, okay. you know, I I opened a Roth IRA. I mean, I even, when I first started in the military, I bought savings bonds because that's what everybody said to do. And then I found out that those oh, are not really thing. good investments. You, you and I did the same thing. Yeah, very it's, similar. Yeah, I, I got I got rid of those to get into mutual funds, like I said. <laughs> you must so, have the same you know, financial officer that, that gave you classes on these things. We must have the same class. I, I never, I kind of had to figure it all out myself. I mean, okay. I wish I would have started TSP when it, when it first opened up. Oh, TSP. But, TSP was, is the greatest thing. It's awesome. It is. Yeah, it is I, the greatest thing. And um, I just we, wish I'd had it my entire career because I, if I would have started a lot younger, I'd have a, yeah. a seven-figure TSP instead of a just a six-figure TSP. But yeah, I, I if if I tell you that you can do the math, twenty percent of my money went to TSP, and I've been doing this since I was, you know a corporal sergeant, I can't remember, at least over 20 years. And so, I mean, it's a lot of money, <laughs> but I can't pull it out until I'm, until I'm retired, until I'm reached that age. So, so it's that's, half. yeah, so that's, that's the big problem that I run into. And that's one of my big frustrations. There's only a few weakness in TSP is that you, you have only like choice A, B, C, D, large cap, mid cap, small cap, international, and then a life cycle. I can't remember all of them. And then, and so that's that's your choices. And so you don't really have a saying, well, what, and then they don't have any matching. So the federal, the federal TSP doesn't have any matching. Where if you go work for a city, state, or county, sometimes they have matching. Or you work for a company, they have a matching, employee matching. Um, and that, I think to me, is, is the next evolution of it. Uh, my general, the, the TSP, the original TSP is you can't even transfer to another another account. But I think the current one now, the current model, let's say you leave the military at 10 years, you can transfer that, t roll over that TSP to another 401k. Let's say you become a police officer for Chicago. You can transfer that to their retirement plan, whatever the retirement plan is, roll over. Uh, but back then, no, you're stuck with it. And <laughs> yeah. So the TSP is the thrift savings plan. Yeah, it's like a 401k plan, yeah. for yeah, the like, military. Yep, yeah, 401k and, for the military, pretty much. And federal employees. Yep. They call it differently, but it's it's the same plan. Yeah. So uh, you know, but my first investment. No, it's a separate. It's a separate fund that you you put either pre or post tax dollars in. I, I can't remember which one. It's post. It, uh, uh, pre. You they take it before you. They take it before you even hit, yeah. Well, see, like half of mine, because I did so many combat deployments, is mm -hmm. tax-free. Because mm -hmm. I just kept participating while I was deployed. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. let's get back to the original question so we can move on to someone else. So always have a plan B. So I have a little bit of real yeah. estate. I have a thrift savings plan. I, I got a really easy job that I yeah. work from home. 
that is super easy and I have sure. a 401k. I have a Roth IRA. I have a trading account. And then, of course, I have an emergency fund. So you know, I feel very well covered. Believe, believe it or not, Phantom, uh, by you sharing your story, it helped out a lot because it gives contacts to new investors. I, I, I see new investors all the time, like all the time. Like every day I meet at least two, three, and they ask me all kind of questions, but it, it provides contacts. So when you're telling stories like this, um, even though it's, it's it's kind of randomness to other people, but I, I guarantee you there's probably like 20 questions that come out of that. They're like, what's retirement plan? Are there a different kind? Uh, you know, I didn't know, you know, and some of them, some work in job, they didn't even talk about retirement plan. They, they didn't even know, they didn't even know anything called brokerage account. I must have opened, since I started my YouTube channel, I must have opened a brokerage account with somebody at least, at least once a week, once a week with somebody. Every time I log in on, every time I log into Discord, you see me sitting there with somebody because I'm working with that, some, that person to, to help them open a brokerage account, you know, just, just walk the dog. And I mean, I'm not, I don't see their screen or anything. I just, I just kind of like Google it and, uh, and just give them some idea to open. They're like, hey, why don't you just open some Robin Hood or do something, you know? Yeah, it's crazy how, how new, new people are, you know. Well, I really appreciate it. I think, another, I think yeah. one other good tip I would give yeah. is yield max is exciting and it's fun, but you should balance your, in, you should have conservative investments, yeah. like, like half of your investments conservative, and then you can, you'll feel more comfortable about half of your investments in something a little more risky. What, so what like I, I own stuff like O Realty that okay. I bought at $38 back in 2009 when someone told me about it and I've just bought a bunch and I've just let it sit. I bought Horizon Technology Finance okay. and I bought it um, at the $10, $10 mark mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's over 11, but it pays an 11% dividend Yeah, and I get a thousand dollars a month just from that. So that's awesome. That gives me a so, you know, I have six figures in her in Horizon, yeah. which allows me to, you know, have about 60, 70 in yield max funds. And yeah. I don't feel bad. Like if if all the yield max funds were going to crash, I know my other conservative investments will yeah. be fine. <laughs> how uh, how so, much dividends you get total in, in, in a month? I'm just curious. About 10, 11 grand. Wow. There you go. That's, 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 that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I, I have like a quarter million just in CLM and CRF, but okay. I've, I found out about those funds in 2014. And right. once you learn, you know, how to play it, like, like Todd says, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great deal. Like right now I have mostly CLM only because it's more liquid than, yeah. than CRF and you can buy more of it during a rights offering. But well, I you mean, know, uh, well, I just bought it. So I don't know anything. I, I bought it for the purpose of YouTube, not because I, I believe in it or I love it or anything like that. Because I want to, uh, well, my dad bought it first mm -hmm. and and my dad bought CLM and he didn't know anything about it. And I, I, I told him, I said, dad, you're a roofer. You, I mean, you, you, you work in construction. You don't have time to sit on a computer. So how do you gonna, you have to do this right offering thing and, and plus uh, he had Merrill Lynch and Merrill Lynch doesn't do the uh, drip on the nav. So so when I told him all these problems that he's like, oh yeah, uh, let me, maybe I should sell it, just get rid of it and, and just do something else. Well, in order for him to do that, I had to buy something on my own. So, so I, that's why I learned it. So I bought a whole bunch of them. I got, I got, I think I got about 10 of them right now. How many do I have? I, I don't, not that many, but I, I bought them. CLM, I own eight, eight share, eight CLM and seven CRF. I, and I buy it once in a while when I have extra money. If I have extra money, I just put in CLM, CRF. You know, eventually this thing gonna get to a hundred or two hundred too, because I just keep doing it. Um, yeah, that's it, that's great, man. Uh, I, I that, just the idea that you get $10,000, man, that, <laughs> <laughs> but, but trust me, I mean, I've, I've lost money along the way, but the, the trick is just to, 
Yeah. To not try to make that money back, just try to make good choices. Yeah. So if you're gonna if you're gonna invest in yield max, I would invest in some other solid stocks, whether it's Exxon Mobil or Microsoft or yeah. I mean I bought I bought Tesla when it was like two twenty. I just sold it at like I don't know what it was, like two eighty five last week or the week before before it crashed. Yeah. I mean, I intended to hold it forever, but I was like, this is going to go back down. I better sell it now. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, then buy it low again. Buy, buy some conservative things, as, yeah. you know, stuff that you just know will go up year after year that you can feel comfortable with. Okay. Wow. Hey, well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll come back to you, you know, when uh, it, just jump in any time. But uh, I'm going to go around the uh, room here and just... Hoff, uh, you're right next to Phantom. Uh, Andrew, we miss you. Uh, you just came in, Andrew, or? Yeah, I just came. I just got back in. <laughs> okay. So, Andrew, uh, you know, uh, I post the question of the day was, the, um, and that's essentially what the topic of today uh, show is. Essentially, um, you know, what was, you know. What did you learn since you started your investment journey? Essentially, that's it. Uh, have uh, have a very lot, a very big cojones, and uh, just do your due diligence, and just listen to both sides. Uh, you know, both sides of the spectrum before you choose what you want to do. At the end of the day, is your money is your money. You do what you want to do with it. So, and have a lot of patience. Yeah, no, I appreciate. It. I mean, well, what what did you learn though? I mean, what on your journey? What is what what is the biggest thing that you learned or discovered? That I I need a lot of patience <laughs> <laughs> and, and do a lot of do a lot of due diligence. I uh, you got into the into the business, you know. There's a lot of pump and dump out there, so you just have to watch what you're doing. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And, uh, ask a lot of questions. Oh man, and that's especially, yeah, especially with people in the Discord, they have there's a lot of knowledge around. So, mm -hmm. like I say, uh, like Kenny said this morning, uh, trading is a very lonely thing. But if you have friends and people around you, ask a lot of questions. It would help you out along the way. Yeah, and, and uh, Andrew brought a good point. Uh, I didn't realize that I I tap uh, all reservation here or, or reservoir, not reservation. Uh, I didn't realize that I found gold mine in within the YouTube space. I have no idea. I I was just I was just trying to help a a community. Then the time I was trying to help a very small community, which is the Cambodian the Khmer community, and then. Next thing you know, I got the Cuban community came and tried to help. And next thing I tried to get, I got the Mexican community came and help. And then I got the, the African community, I got the European, and then I got a lot of Canadians. So our channel just exploded. There was a lot of immigrants that came to the United States and they all, all of us, didn't matter where we came from, we all have the same problem set. And that is, that is we, we don't wanna be poor and we wanna take advantage and take opportunity of uh, making money and become rich and, and create wealth and establish some kind of wealth uh, for their families in uh, in the United States. So, so as as I as I was doing, I didn't have Discord back then. You know, I was like, okay, how do we talk to each other? And I've been doing Discord for a long time because of video game. I said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can put everybody into Discord, and I'm just gonna invite them if they want to come and talk about it. It started off as only like four or five people. You know, they come in and they just start talking about stuff. Um, Next thing you know, you got people, you know, people who's very successful, who's been doing it for a long time. They come into our Discord too. People like Matt, people like Kenny's and stuff like that, they all came in. And what happened is that the, the communities are growing. And we're, I think, I, I have to be, I don't know any other community, but because I don't hang out, uh, I used to hang out in everybody Discord, and I used to hang out in everybody space. But now I'm at the point that I don't need to hang out with anybody Discord or any space. So I just kind of remove myself from all those pictures. I just focus on my Discord and my space, but um, because I don't, I, I find that there was there's no use to learning any from anybody. Like the reason I hang out in other gaming channel Discord, you learn you want to learn how they they do things so you can improve on your own process. But you, I find out that this in an investment channel that is like opposite, you know. So it, it, 
it doesn't work. So, but our Discord is growing. I mean, our community is growing. Um, I mean, I think I think it's one of the fastest growing community. Um, I, it's not like a lot of people they measure. I saw one guy. He measure. He look at my subscriber base, and he literally told me to like, you know, like it's small, cute, very cute, very small. You know, I'm a small YouTuber. Yeah, because I'm not asking for a subscriber. Matter of fact, the the sole reason why we're so successful is that I don't care if you subscribe, don't care if you, you know, donate any money. We're not going to sell you an Excel spreadsheet. We're not going to sell you an e-guy. We're not going to sell you a Discord channel. And we're not going to send you to a website to get money and stuff like that. It, it's contrary to helping people. And, and especially the community I'm after, the community are low income. So they, if, like, why would you want to take more money from them? Take, and what I always tell them, instead of paying me or paying somebody else, pay, there's two people you should pay though. You should pay a, a financial advisor, a real financial advisor, and, and get a good financial advisor. But most people can't even afford that. So, um, so use us as a resources. But then, you know, if you're going to pay, pay to your internet company. That's it. Pay your internet, your, your internet com company because this court is free and watching YouTube is free. As long as you pay your Verizon, your AT&T, and then, and if you want some financial advice, go, go, you know, pay the financial guys or your, you know, that, that's it. That's pretty much the only cost you need. Other than that, man, it's, you can do it on your own and use us as a resource. And that's why I think our channel just explode for that reason. Uh, do you find that Andrew? I don't know when you came into our channel. You came in from the beginning or the middle, or or. I came in the middle. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I've been following you guys for a while, since you. I guess. Yeah. Since like the second video you should put up. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. All okay. right. So, I mean, yeah. do you sense that? I mean, because you you you're one of the active voice here in the channel, uh, because you you. Yeah. Always well, well, that's why I said. I mean, the only reason I joined you because like. Uh, uh, your channel is very um, there's there's things that I can learn from. Not it's like a a, a sales speed a pitch, mm -hmm. but there's place where I can learn and where I can uh, have you know great mind things alike. I think so. There's people that I can communicate with that understand what I'm talking about, but not trying you know sell me something. So yeah, that's why I stick around. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, 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 yeah, I hope you stick around a lot longer. And, and yeah, it, as long as I'm around, we always gonna be, it's go, always gonna be free. And uh, it's always gonna be because I'm trying to help the community. And um, so, you know, and then people are like, well, you should make, make some money. Well, my money is my portfolio. This is, this is my source of income. This is my joy. I don't need to make money to charge people to, get, to, to have conversation with me, to hang out, to learn. I may not know a lot right now because I'm, I'm essentially not even a year old. I know a lot of stuff because I have worldly experience. I read a lot of books. I, I'm educated. I go to school, but I just don't know a lot of stuff in finance. But eventually, I'm going to know a lot. Like, I know how to do a lot of stuff. So that knowledge base is just going to grow. It's going to get to a point where uh, where what what I say is not going to be, it's not going to be like, well, I'm not really sure. Let me go ask somebody. Or I'm just going to talk from a position of knowledge because knowledge of either I bought the stock or I because I bought a lot of stocks just to play around and test it out, or I've been there, done that, or I read somewhere, or I read a book, or study it, or or I have experience in this particular thing. I think what's going to happen once I have knowledge and once I have the information, I can share. It. Oh yeah, this this channel is going to even it's going to the community is going to grow even more because now. Uh, now I can co compete toe to toe against anybody. There's a lot of YouTube out there. I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to compete against them because their knowledge of finance is so. I mean, I'm 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 essentially playing Pop Warner and they're, they're Tom Brady's. So I, I, I give. Yeah. You know, I don't think you have to compete with anybody, bro. Yeah. As long as you have heart and then the people that's around here have you know have have the same same mindset where they want to share stuff, they want to teach stuff, you know, and they have people to learn. Yeah. No selling gimmicks. That's all I count. <laughs> like seriously, I mean, I came in here, I talked to Matt, yeah. love the guy. Then have never met him, met him before. Yeah. You know, and Kenny's the same way. You know, yeah. my brother from another mother, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, yeah, and right. Huff the other day we 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 talked and you know yeah. you know 
Yeah, there's always things to learn. They just as long as you have heart and is you be truthful. Just don't don't sell me a gimmick. You know, you sell yeah. me a gimmick, I can just walk away, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's all okay. it is. All right. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, so, how how's it going, brother? What what so what did you learn since you started the investment journey? What's up, come here? I'm uh make it a little quick. I'm kind of moving around at work, but uh, man, the biggest I would say the biggest thing I've learned would be for one, patience, because the amount of time I've lost money selling out of a stock, and then it pops a week later. Uh, I can I can count on probably two fingers how many, if, if not more. But the wow. second biggest thing I would say is um, control. You know, learning what you what you can do out there to control your position instead of just being subject to the markets. You can kind of like you know have more control than you think you can. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's my two. Points. I appreciate it, Huff. And Huff gave us a whole class on option trading. That was pretty good. Um, between Kenny and Huff, man, my brain is like exploding. Uh, Lamb of Wall Street, uh, how are you doing? Uh, Wanda, uh, uh, what, what lesson have you learned since you started your investment journey? Hello, everyone. Um, I was trying to think of one of the... the um, biggest lessons that I've learned and I would say it is to have a watch list ready you know especially <laughs> like these times that we're in now and you know when there's a uh, sure. when there's blood in the streets you know keep your head and start going shopping <laughs> yeah. you know you don't want to go shopping too early either you know you have to when there's blood in the street, you can't go shopping too early. You have to wait until, you know, everybody is like selling, you know, for the like, whatever they can get. And that's when you start to, you you know, you start to pick up. Uh, and, and you need to know when I say you have the watch list ready and you're doing the research all along. So when when that happens, you know, you say, oh, this is too low. This is, this, you know, this is crazy low. And then you, then you pick it up. And uh, so uh, I learned that, you know, <laughs> you know, because when it happens, people do lose their mind, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you know, and then the news is going crazy. Oh, it's dropping and, you know, and then it's, it's big. And so, you know, and you don't want to go in too early because, you buy and they say don't don't uh try to catch a dry, uh, a falling knife you know you can uh you go in and then it drops another 10 15 20 percent and you know and you you know and it's like you, you know you just have to watch first and um and then uh then you go in and pounce well i appreciate it wanda uh thanks for sharing us that story um mm -hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go down the list here. Lions, how how you doing, Lion? So, what have you learned since you uh, been doing the investment? <clears throat> yeah. So, from my perspective, some of the things already mentioned by others, uh, like patience, discipline, and always stay the strategy. So, I start with patience. Uh, I learned that market uh, cannot go up straight line, right? It cannot go down straight line. So you have to have a strategy when to buy and what to buy. Yeah. And also, you need to understand the sectors you are in. So one of the things is to do top-down analysis and bottom-up analysis. So when you're looking at the underlying or any stock, you need to understand the sector this is in from the top down. So let's say if I want to look at Exxon, I look at the energy sector. If I want to buy nuclear, I look at uranium commodity. If I look at uh, other commodities like uh, metals and stuff, I want to understand that better. So every sector has kind of driving force. 
So that's a top-down type of approach where you have to look at the spectrum of the, how it behaves at the forces that may impact the sector as a whole. And then you look at the companies or the players in that sector to understand better how it works. And bottom-up is uh, the other way around when you look at the company and see how it's playing around in this sector, if this is a good play or bad play. Yeah. So this is type of analysis that I learned over the years from my investment journey. And the discipline is you can go and see the market go against you. You need to know what to do next. And you have to control your emotions. Because if uh, you get panicked, yeah. you're going to lose money. Oh, I'm sorry. Cut, we'll cut each other mm -hmm. off. Yeah, I'm saying if, if, if you get panicked when there is a sell-off, you're gonna you're gonna lose your shirt. You need to know what to do next. Maybe this is an opportunity to buy. So you have to know very well what to buy, when you buy, what to think for. Lion, uh, I just you you just faded away, so I'm not sure what happened to your mic. Uh, but we'll come back to you, Lions, uh, uh, once you get your mic sorted out. So, uh, Matt, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Uh, let me, um, so how, how's the world? Oh, by the way, happy anniversary. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I bet you like that video when I talk about relationship. Absolutely. Cornerstone of our lives. Yeah. It, it, it truly is. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I was if I was a doctor. I don't know if I advocate for relationship differently, um, because I'm a byproduct. I'm a military man, and so over time, I value relationships so much more. Uh, relationship with each other, relationship with your family, because those things are. I just for some reason to become the more the most important thing to me. But if I work and live at home with my parents and I see them all the time, I don't know if I, I, I come up with this concept, you know, like just, I, I, probably, I probably don't even think about it, you know. Yeah, look, if you find the right person, yeah. it's worth its weight in gold. If you don't, it's not, in all honesty. <laughs> we, we aren't meant to be solitary people. Yeah. So relationships makes the the world go round, you know. Yeah. What's it, the... It's the basis of your hopes and dreams. So Matt, what's a, a you, you obviously you you've been doing investment a lot longer than all of us. Um, what is your what is your biggest lesson learned? You know. Um. That's a good question. I've got hundreds of them. <laughs> um, here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, and it's not tongue-in-cheek, and I, I mean it. Beware of fake people on the internet. Um, people tend to do things, um, whether it's exaggerate their wealth or, or talk about wealth that they don't have, or they're trying to push a product or service down your throat. Um, it, it, it's easy to see other people that are apparently successful um, do all this sort of stuff. Um, don't get me wrong, I think everybody's got to make a living, but I think they should do it honestly. Um, if they're successful, why are they charging 20 or 50 or 100 bucks or 4,000 bucks for a product? It may or may not be right for you. You know, if, if they've got a secret to success, yes, you should probably pay for that. They're, they're entitled to be paid for their expertise, but they shouldn't be forcing it down your throat. You know? Yeah. Um, and I don't care whether it's somebody on YouTube or you get an email or, or whatever it is. Um, unless it's with a registered, reputable company, be careful of doing business online. It, yeah, it, it, I, it's too, yeah, it's too easy to get sucked in. Yeah, 
Yeah, I. Th th this is new frontier for me. Um, I I came from a world where, you know, men are men. Uh, you know, people are. You know, words mean something. They say something. They 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 live and die by those codes and those honors. And so it's very foreign to me to come into the YouTube space and then to find out that. Um, some people don't have true intention uh, of what, you know, what it is, you know. Uh, yep. And, um, and it's not, it's not that I've been bitten big time or anything like that. Like, probably my biggest mistake is a step of omission. I haven't done my due diligence on something. I didn't have a plan. I had FOMO. Yeah. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, the biggest take I can and give people is research what it is you're buying have a plan your entry price if if things turn crap where you're going to exit yeah and what you're expecting it to do for you over what time frame you, you need those three things as the minimum and you don't need to watch it daily like i don't need to know that tesla's gone up or gone down today it doesn't really matter to me what matters to me is because i'm not selling at the moment what matters to me is the dividends that they're, they're creating because that's what I've bought. I've bought the dividend, not the stock price. Yeah. Yes, I manage my stock price, or I have been able to so far. So I'm not down like plenty of other people are, and that's my good management more than, or it's either that or it's their bad management. Now, don't get me wrong, shit happens, you know. But if you're not selling, don't worry about the stock price. Use it and you. Know, in your favor and average down you know yeah. you can have a look at the 52 week range and even though they haven't been out 52 weeks yet but it'll give you a range from inception to its highest point then go look at the chart and see if it's trading up and down and see if it's happening in cycles you know um like the seasons for weather have a look and see if it's doing that and if you've got an M or a W or something like that, you know it can pick up and at some point it will. Yeah. So don't stress a, a price. Yes, it's not good to see the value of your portfolio go down, but it's one of the things that's going to happen and it doesn't matter what stock you buy. Nothing goes to the moon and, and doesn't fall back. You know? Yep. So, so, you know, you buy a cake to eat it. You're buying high dividend um, yield stocks to give you the dividend. Focus on the dividend and then focus on your yield on cost. Where you can, add to, and, and if it's within your plan, add to your parcel to bring your, and it might only bring it down a few cents, but that few cents adds percentage points. And over time, that can be a lot of money. Yeah, good, good word of wisdom. Matt has tons of word of wisdom. So uh, if you come to Discord, you'll see him. And uh, one thing I like about Matt is that while we're sleeping, he actually cover for us on the other backside of it, uh, because there's you know our channel is essentially open 24 hours, and it's very international. You got the Asian will come on when we're sleeping. Uh, the European, the Asian, they they all talking to each other. And then, and then when we wake up, now you got the American. Now the partners of the people are the Americans, but you can see it. That, that's one of the most busiest Discord I've seen anywhere. It's it's probably busier than my gaming Discord. It's just so active. There's so many people just throwing ideas and 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 just double check each other, especially on Monday. Mon this Monday morning, you're gonna see it. You just watch it. People, there's gonna be hundreds of people talking about things, and uh, it's, it's it's just interesting if you don't know what i'm talking about just come to our discord and just take a look at it i mean uh, instead of instead of just me talking and listen to it all you do is go into uh the, the the top of the youtube page here and you click on discord right here and it'll just come right into our discord and you just see it for yourself and um and uh and it's very busy uh well thank you matt i appreciate it i'm gonna go with patrick here uh no worry thanks bud yeah uh, hey Patrick, so what's uh, 
what lesson, you know, since you started your investing journey, you know, what, what is the biggest lesson learned you have or what? Patrick, you there? Okay, uh, random guy. I know random guy, his mic is down. Um, but he is in YouTube chat and he is in chat. So, uh, random guy, I'll give you a chance here. If your mic is down, is your mic down? Hey. Oh, you're back. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree uh, a lot with what Matt said. You know, be careful who you're listening to, you know, <laughs> uh, especially on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I've, uh, <clears throat> I'm like a lot of other people. I uh, I have a 401k. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got. Uh, you know, when you go to professionals, they basically guide you to slow movers. You know, being very cautious. They put you in you know things that will generate you know four or five, six percent. Yeah. And, and it's great because they drip. You know, they go right back, and you keep. I mean, but it's so slow moving, and that's why I, I wanted to get into the, uh, the high yield stuff. Yeah. But uh, you know. You just, it takes time to learn. You know, I've only been doing it a couple of months. So, and that's how I found you on, uh, on face on YouTube. And after enough research, I got into the UMAX stuff and then I've been picking up flip. And I like that one. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Now uh, I this. keep telling people this, uh, if you, you didn't, you didn't buy because of me, you bought it because it's a logical thing because I just point logical that this is high yield and what are we afraid of you know because you know it is that is that correct or are you are you just well, I, because of me well like i said i mean no i mean i i, I you know i know it existed because a lot of people obviously it's very popular uh but like i say i mean most of my money is in you know slow movers yeah so yeah. i did take, just take a small amount to mm -hmm. get in you know get into this and see if i can actually you know how fast I can grow an account. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I guess it. I guess you could say it's kind of an experiment for me. Yeah. So and so far so good. You know, until this last week, like everybody else. But uh, like Max said, that's you know you, you buy the stock for the dividends, not for yeah. the uh, price of the stock. So. so. So what do you think about community? Since you 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 literally, I think you like live in our Discord because no matter what time, what day, I see you all the time. And every time well, I you, come in, you, you're always in there. <laughs> well, you know, I have a computer on most of the time during the day. So, yeah. I mean, I'll click on it and it'll just sit there. You know, right. sometimes I'll get kicked off. And, you know, yeah. I'm not always paying attention to it. I'm you know, a lot of times doing other things. So, Yeah. So what do you, what do you think of it uh, just since you've been it's, hanging away? It's, it's pretty cool. You know, you, you uh, there, there's a lot of people that uh, discuss a lot of really cool stuff. You know, you learn it. You know, I didn't really know a lot about uh about puts and stuff of that nature so i mean it's 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 a learning experience so. yeah 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 you 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 uh -huh. represent and guess what here's here's a crazy part even though there's a lot of immigrants but you, you, random guy you're not an immigrant yeah no, no. <laughs> well i mean my, my my ancestors were but you know, not my generation no yeah yeah and uh so yeah i mean it because this this is a human problem. It's not it's not a very particular group of people problem. It's a human problem, because you're trying you're, you you realize um, that there's you know there's opportunity that you can do it yourself. Because you, you point out uh, at the very beginning when you first said it that you you go get help from advisor and they 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 give you a you know slow moving you know advice because why they want to generate income from them you know. For, by you using their service, you generate income. By them buying the stock that they they recommend, you go into one of these uh, advisor and they tell you, "Hey, go buy some mutual fund here. Here's some list of mutual fund." They all tell you the same thing. Yeah. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be getting uh, like I say, four, five, six percent. You know, which it's it's solid. Yeah. You're not worried about it. You know, you're not checking your stocks all the time. You know, yeah. but uh, like I say, I mean, it's extremely you know. Like, yeah. like Matt said, it's for somebody that's, you know, 20 years old, that's just starting out. Mm -hmm. And it's perfect for them, you know, because by the time you get to, you know, 70 years old, you'll be, you'll be set pretty well. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you got your mic fixed, random guy. Uh, so now you can be actively in, wait, did, were you the one with the mic problem this morning or is it? Or yeah, somebody? yeah. Well, I have another laptop that the mic doesn't work half the time or it's, oh, like, it's okay. weird. Okay. 
Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. It, yeah, it sounds like it's gargling and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, well, I appreciate it. I'm gonna go. I'm Absolutely. gonna go down to uh, down to Sam. Sam, what's going on? You you're the you our Tesla expert. <laughs> Sam, you there? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm in the pool with the kids. Oh. Yeah, I think the one thing I've learned is like you know, only invest in what you know, right? Just yeah. take your time. You know, ask a lot of questions. You know, I like free open debate. I don't like people just saying, hey, you got to do this or do that or you're going to miss out. Just do your homework. Mm -hmm. Take your time. That's, that's, that's my only advice I can give anybody. Yeah, me and Sam, we spent a lot of time talking about, you know, because I do have self-doubt because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm brand new to this space, you know, to YouTube, to the community, to everything, to finance. And I, I tend to doubt myself a little bit and because i ask a lot of questions and and a lot of time people don't see this i actually if if they take the time to explain to me they would actually i would i i would favor them and or, or at least go into the same direction they they would want me to go um but they you know people don't take the time to explain and when you don't take the time to explain i just i i it doesn't really matter what you're selling. It doesn't matter what you do because nobody. It, it's just we 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 are so new. We don't know. We so uh, if you don't take the time to explain, we're not gonna buy it. We're, we're just not gonna buy it. Even you say this is the best uh, medication ever. If you take this right now, um, you know, holy water. You drink this and you will be cured. And you know, 15 disease. You know, whatever. Yeah, but you got to explain it. You got to explain it step by step and process. And most people don't do that. The biggest thing was that crypto. People don't re people don't realize this. My military call sign is crypto. My military call sign is crypto. Just give you an idea. That's my name. Okay. Right? And I'm I, I want to be all in on crypto. But the reason I can't be all in on crypto is because I don't have money. So I got to do the income investment first. Once I have income investment, then I go buy crypto. That was literally the, like in one of my, or, or go buy growth stock and all that stuff because they generate, it's to generate wealth, all right? I totally, I understand that. But the thing was, I'm new and I don't know anything about it. If you don't know anything about it, you ask questions. Well, I ask a lot of questions. In the process of asking questions, instead of just listen to the question I'm asking, people took it as an insult and or, or, or question their philosophy, uh, questioning their their business model, questioning well, why they do the things they do. In other words, just kind of come across as as you know disrespect because they, but they it should have just take the time and just ask the question, and 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 analyze the question that I'm asking or at least listen to what I was asking because they would have helped me. They would literally help me because I was already it's in my plan. It's in the game. It's in the PowerPoint plan that what do you do after you make $5,000 a month? Well, after I make $5,000 a month, it's free money now. I can either go into crypto or I can go into growth stocks and buy them, you know, like these things. I want to learn more about it. I want to learn more about these investment vehicles, all these investment vehicles. Uh, you know, there's there's crypto, there's gold, there's land that, uh, you know, there's uh, all kinds of stuff that I, I, I thought about and then uh, obvious growth stock is in there. I just want I want to venture into all these territory, but I'm not going to venture in these territory when I only put a thousand in. I got to be able to generate a, an income flow of income for me to do these investment first. And and the the pad the pathway was there. You know you know who you know who took the time to to explain me what option trading is, Kenny. When I first met Kenny, I didn't, it's not because he was in the Navy, I'm in the military, we both have something in common. We didn't know each other. He called me up one day and I was driving, I was driving, uh, I was on a, a, on a business and I was, I was uh, with, with my girl, I was going on a date essentially, and I, in my Tesla, and he called me up one day on, a, on the Messenger, um, no, not Messenger, the uh, Discord, uh, Discord uh, what do you call the Discord voice, Discord phone? And he, he took the time to explain me what option trading is because he understood that one, I, here 
I, I, I understood what Tesla is. I understood how they make money, but I don't have the nitty gritty of making money. And once I understood that, and Kenny, Kenny brought up a good point. He always talk about if you if you can explain why you do option trading, if you can't, or if you cannot explain why you do the things you do, then you should not do at all. You should not do option trading. So that's the first question he was always asked. I w I was I have no vested interest in doing option trading, but I want to know is what I want to know is how Tesla made money. How how do they how do they do option trading? How do they make money? And Kenny took the time to explain it to me. Because he knew that once he, once I understand the logic of things, I'm in. I'm, I'm, I, it's easy. I, I got it. I, I move on. Now we never met. All, he, all he'd been doing is watching my YouTube channel. He hasn't really talked to me. He just watched YouTube channel and then he just, he, he just saw something in me, and he's like, I'm gonna take the time to explain to me. This. Let me tell you. I've been doing this for nine months. Nine, nine months now. I've been making YouTube video. Uh, for a long time, but I've been talking about investment journey hard, probably somewhere around May or June, you know, like start making YouTube video on it. Not a single person from the crypto community, not a single person to sit down and take the time and explain me step by step what it is. Not a single person. But the option community did, not, not just Kenny, but a whole bunch of them. And so, so when you're new and, and nobody wants to take the time to explain to you, but all they tell you is buy this, go do this, go do that. And, and, if, you, and, and if you start asking questions, then, then you, you become a hater and you, you know, somehow you, you, you disrespected them, you know. Uh, hey, man, if you take it that way, I apologize for, for those out there in the community. But no one, up to this point, no one have ever sat down and explained to me. I mean, there's... The, the, I, I have this YouTube video, I have Discord, but no one ever said, hey, let me let me explain you how this thing works so that I can help you. Because once once I understood it, oh yeah, man, it, it, I, I'm gonna throw money into it. I'm, I'm gonna start investing, I'm gonna start doing things. I'm gonna do the things that exactly what is it that you tried to inspire me to do. Um, so with that, I'm gonna, Kenny got the last saying here, Kenny just came in. Kenny, you just came in or you've been here the whole time? Uh, I've been here for like 45 minutes now, oh, probably. <laughs> um, I, 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 should, I don't have I don't have Discord in, in my second screen open, so. Uh, nah, man. Nah, man. It's all good, man. Yeah. So, um, so I, am I right on this? I mean, because you you literally took the time. I mean, we spent almost four hours. You know. Yeah. Yep. And I told you um, I was on the date, and like my girl was like, "What are you doing? Why are you talking to this guy?" And you know what my answer to her? I was like, he's in the Navy. I, like, so, you know, anytime I say military stuff, she usually doesn't get involved. She's like, okay, you do your thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's mainly because you're in the military and, you know what I mean, you see another brother yeah. doing his thing, you're you're going to instantly want to, yeah. you know what I mean, you're going to want to help him out and all this stuff. So yeah. um, that was the initial and... Um, you know, he's sound like a good guy, so we just chop it up. Cause as I said earlier, trading is lonely, so you yeah. gotta have people, uh, people around you who are like-minded. Yeah. Are you glad? You glad you called me? Or are you? What, what, I mean, well, I I appreciate it every minute that you. That phone call was. If if I if I if you and I ever become a millionaire someday and become rich someday and then we meet, and uh, and I want to say hey. That was probably the best phone call ever, and I'm glad Ooh. I pick up that phone. You know, you know, one rule of thumb when you play video game: never ever answer the Discord phone. If somebody call you on Discord, never ever answer that. And so the first person to call me was Kenny, and and at first I wasn't sure it's from the video game community because I have three other Discord that I you know. And I was like, well, is this the Call of Duty guys? Who is this? Like, because his name, I, I don't know what Theta Trader, well, the, the traders would kind of give it away. But if he just said Theta Kenny, I, that could have been uh, from Call of Duty guys. I was thinking Call of Duty. And, um, but but when he said, hey, I'm gonna talk to you about option trade. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna teach you how option trading work. Uh, I'll tell you, that's one of the best. I, I, I normally just block it and normally I just ignore it. But I'll tell you, that was the best phone picked up ever yep yeah yeah it's you know it's one of those um as for my uh 
experience with in, with investing. Yeah. Um, the first thing I will say to anybody right now is, it can go left, and it will go left. So if you think something will not happen wrong, if you think you're gonna buy Tesla at 16 and it's just gonna go to the moon tomorrow, you're you're gonna be in for a real surprise. So you need to understand and put that in your plan that, hey, the stock goes down, the stock goes down um, and deal with that. Um, number two is learning. Learning is the biggest thing for me. I was fortunate to where a lot of my learning happened between 2019 and after COVID finish. So I had a lot of time during COVID where we're sitting down at home. So I was just in YouTube videos. I was in, you know, um, Wikipedia, wherever I can get the information, I was pulling it from. Every word I heard, I'm Googling that word, trying to find out like what it was. Um, like earlier we were talking about stock splits. The second I heard about it, I started looking up what this thing is because even though it doesn't affect me, at the end of the day, it identifies something for me later on, or I can pass it on to somebody else who doesn't know. So learning is one of the biggest things for me is because it you can identify good or bad situations yeah. based on your knowledge. Uh, like six months ago, I learned about buying T-bills and uh, with a broker like Tasty Trade, you could buy a hundred thousand dollars of T-bills and they'll still give you your margin. So with T-bills right now, it's like 6%. So just imagine they lock up a hundred K giving you 6%, but they're like, you can only option trade. You cannot buy stock and we'll give you the margin to do it. So like, that's a big deal that they do that no other broker does. Um, actually interactive broker does it, something like that. Um, but that was a big thing there where I was just like, oh man, I need to look into T-bills to see how this is. And I saw, and I looked and I was like, man, this is what all the banks buy and everybody buys is just, you know, treasury bills from the government. How does it affect your option trading? You knowing what interest rates are and understanding the correlation between interest rates. So learning is really, really big. And just knowing you're wrong. Because <laughs> you can be wrong like a lot. I've been wrong a lot. And you know, you just, you, you take the L and and you move on so yeah. you you bought a stock you didn't know what it's about and then you find out like oh this thing is a, a sham or you know whatever it is this company not making any money mm -hmm. then accept you're wrong and just move on because my 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 main thing is i love trading right yeah. and if i don't have an account i cannot trade so i protect my account i don't i don't play video games like that anymore because i'm trading like trading removed me from the whole video game thing and it I learned so many other things from it because you know you learn of I didn't know that much about microeconomics and all these things and stuff like that until I got into trading so it helped me out a lot more than sitting here trying to play 2k or something that yeah. I'm not gonna learn anything from get beat up by some 15 year old <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, ever since I did this, I, I play less game now. I, I used to play it all the time, but I still play a little bit here and there, but I just play less. Um, you know, I, I agree with you on that. Yep, that is that is one of the, the, the big things for me. So I ensure that I have to maintain my account in the sense. So I look at what I'm buying and ensure I know exactly what I'm buying, exactly what I'm selling, how we make the dividend. These questions are questions and you can research it just by by yourself. At the end of the day, you need to learn the entirety of the stock itself. Right. You can't buy it and then say you're going to learn after you buy it because then you might have bought it at the wrong point. All right. No, uh, yeah. What I got. Well, that was good. So uh, I'm, I'm glad you're the last person here. Uh, and Boogie, you just came in. Uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes of talk. But after that, uh, we're gonna transition since Kenny is here. We wanna maximize his skill set and Kenny and Huff is here. There's a couple of questions. Uh, it, this is not a topic for us to talk about, but since both of you are here, I wanna maximize the time. I wanna, I wanna learn more about this ODT, zero DTE uh, trade, and then how, how's that gonna affect us? 
because I think there's opportunity for us to see a real competitor. Until Rexshare come out, right now we have a stock that we can go buy right now that potentially a real competitor to, to yield max. Um, but before we jump into that topic, let me give Ann Boogie a chance to, to say something to the community here. Uh, Ann Boogie, I know you just came in, but um, but everybody have a hey, up, yeah. guys. hey, what's up, guys? No, I'm good. I'm just I'm just listening in tonight, just checking you guys out, trying to learn and stuff like that. So you guys are good. All right. Hope everyone's. Good. Oh. I, I watch your I watch one of your YouTube video today, and dude, I got lost right away when you go five, six, seven, spin. It wasn't. <laughs> there was so many movement. I don't know how you're supposed to remember it. There was like. You would literally went to twenty, maybe twenty movements in that whole three minutes of video of just movement after movements after movements after movements. Like, how do you remember these dance movements? This is crazy, man. I guess you do it long. <laughs> you do long. Yeah, I've done a long time in that class. We um we have re reviewed it for a while, so. All right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah, one of these days, you and I need to sit down and ask. I have a question about like the use of arms uh, because I noticed in in a couple of your YouTube video, a lot of your dancers use their arms uh, more. Like I, I watch a lot of K-pop dancer, and the K-pop dancers tend to use yeah. the legs and and a lot of their uh, their body to match with the legs. But in your in your style, there's a lot of arm movement. More like I see it more like a cheerleader type kind of thing. But then it also remind me more like Indian dance, like from India, like not India from from Omaha. I'm talking about India from India, the country, and uh, you know, so it's more like Indian dance, a lot of hand movements, uh, stuff like that too. I, I'm just curious. One of these days, I would love to ask you this question. Yeah, definitely. We can sit down and talk about it. Of yeah. course. Okay, so uh, so this is for Huff and and Theta uh, Kenny. Um, so. One of the question that's coming up uh, that's you know, so today is Sunday and the purpose of the YouTube video on Sunday is to set condition to buy for for uh, on, for the week you know uh, you know to, to do any self examine of stocks and and you know any latest news something to watch out for and stuff like that and on Thursday when we do the live streaming is to validate everything we learned from today and then to, to make any final decision on Friday trade. So I'll start off with this question. I, I would, if, if you're not here, Kenny, and Huff, you're not here, I wouldn't no, even ask this I'm question. Here. I'm uh, here. So the question is, I don't know you're tracking QQQY. Let me go Let me go in there and type it up so everybody know. QQY is the new Defiance NASDAQ 100 uh, option income ETF. They essentially do what you call zero DTE, zero day. I don't know what the ETE stands for. Uh, option zero day option, and uh, it's the newest thing. And this CEO, if it's okay, I'm gonna play this for a second here. If if you have not seen this video, but I'm gonna fast forward to her. Welcome to ETF. Hi. So I, I just want to make it clear right. what we're doing here. So you remember, you're selling a put. You want the market to go up. Yes. So if your market goes up, the put expires worthless. You keep the entire exactly. premium, exactly, uh, and you distribute this as a dividend. Yes, right. So it gets. So we collect the premium on a daily basis, and we'll distribute the actual income on a monthly basis. So the way that you can kind of you know see that actual income if you're an investor is to look at your account at the end of the month, and it'll come. So in. what kind of dividend do you think you're gonna? Yeah, annualized. It depends on the market. It, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you it don't depends know, right? on the market, right? So if we back tested it from the time that these were in existence, which was 2022, and we compare them to the, some of the other strategies out there, the QILDs, the Jeffies of the world, and you know we're looking to return two to two and a half times that because what happens is with those strategies, which are actually a very similar risk profile, that's another point that we can talk about too. It's super interesting, but you know we've heard a lot about how risky this is. The risk is pretty similar to a covered call strategy, right? But what happens is that every day we get a chance to take a little bite of the apple and generate premium instead of just kind of being locked in for that monthly call. It so is a covered call premium, essentially, it's, but it's a daily. Yes, exactly, right. exactly. Right. Now, so it's easy to see why these options have exploded this year, folks. It, it, think about what this does. This gives... All right, so somewhere within that video, she she said that there's a potential 60% return, dividend yield, uh, and she said it's going to be you know one of the, the best in the street. I think I think we kind of interpreted the best of the street is essentially yield max, so not not QYLD and those guys, but but I think 
I think that's essentially she's going after that. That's how I interpret. A lot of us interpret that way. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the video, Kenny and half you guys more and jump in. You guys, the uh, option trader here for our the Khmer communities. And uh, what do you think of the video? And uh... um, so she 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 basically did the explanation of it um, for people looking into getting into it. This is um a lot more market dependent so but no matter what stock you buy is technically market dependent so if the market is going down this strategy can still make money because it just depends on what they're selling they they don't tell exactly what they're selling so they could sell it in the money put or out of the money put but these are these are after the market opens most of the time the move is done overnight or in the pre-market so we just flat the rest of the day so let's say we're down one percent before the market open for the rest of the day we might just sit flat or go up a little bit so when we open if they sell a put that is one percent out of the money from the one percent we're already down then that put has no chance of getting touched so it, it this strategy has a lot to do with what what percentage the put that they're selling but if the market is going down everybody's going down but this has the capability to make the money that she's making so she's not lying saying they can make 60 percent a year they can make that it just depends on what the market is doing that that is how i look at it yeah. and your risk is your risk is an in the day market tank, not an overnight because unless they, they, they're not real, they said they can sell weeklies, but they're not really gonna, they're focusing so, on days. So they're not doing what you, what we are so used to right now is the synthetic call, uh, cover call. Uh, so how, what, 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 uh, are they using cover call? No, so they're not. Nope. So let's spy right now is yeah. that. Is, is that four four hundred and thirty? Yeah. So they're gonna come in tomorrow and sell the four hundred and twenty-five put. That's it. All they're doing is selling a put that expires that day. So if the market doesn't move, that put gets clapped. So if well, the market doesn't come down, can, that can put. You, can dies. you tell me what what is it? The QQQ is it? What which one? Oh yeah, yeah. That's QQQ. Yes. Yeah. So do QQQ, uh -huh. and if you look at the price of it, well, they're doing it on. Wait, the that's called QQQ but, or some other? They're doing it on the indices, but it's basically the same thing. All right. But they're doing it on the indices, which is 10 times bigger than QQQ. Yep. Oh, so well, let me just that. look at it. And, and what's ND? No, not, not. Yes, that's the indices. So you and, have and the DX. actual index. No, that's $48. I'll... Yep. You need to go back. You need to go back and type in QQQ. No why. Just three Qs. All right. Okay, um, so if here you're, it is. If you're in Discord, I can see in real time because okay, I'm watching uh, yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, give me a second. Let me go. Uh, to, let me go. Give give you Discord. Can you see in Discord? Yeah, yeah. One second. Um. Yeah, I just need you to put it on the right screen now. Oh, wrong screen. Yep. Sorry. Uh, change window. Lucky I didn't show you my yep, bank account. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So, right. So QQQ is at. 358 right yeah so they'll go in tomorrow and they could sell the 350 put so unless we go down to 350 they collect all that money tomorrow like it's a one day deal and that's it they're so not going to do any defensive strategy they're just doing that so if it doesn't if it doesn't go down to 350 well, why, why, why you select 350? Is it, is, is it... I don't know what their strategy, they don't list, oh. like they said, they can yeah. do in the money. So they could technically sell a 360. Yeah. Because they said they can sell it in the money. So they can sell a 360, which is $2 in the money. Yeah. And if we, if we close the day at 361, they keep all that money. So it's just where they want to sell. And what's, they, what's, a, because what's the they, advantage of doing that? I mean, what, what's... You get more it? money. You get more money. The more right you are, the more money you get. Yeah. So, so it, you have let's to be, say... Yeah. You have to be right, right? So there has to be, like, news, 
or something, you know what I mean? Something that's driving the market up. They're not going to just do that tomorrow with no news at all. So these guys have to be good economists. Um, it, it, it's, it's all probability. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with probability, right? So yeah. if I'm selling the 350 tomorrow, um, just give me 10 seconds. Let me pull up 350 and tell you how much it's going for for tomorrow. QQQ. All right. So if we sell in the 350 put for tomorrow, yeah. that put, it's, go, it's only going for $17, but that trade has a 93% chance of you winning the trade. So if we bring it up and we decide to sell a 352, that trade has a 89% chance of you winning the trade. You understand what I'm saying? So if you do probability, mm -hmm. you can you can get out all the time. But because they're trying to get 0.25, then they might want to bring the trade up to like 70% chance of you winning the trade. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because they want more premium. Mm -hmm. So it's just what they want to do um, to make the money. But all they're doing is selling a put. There's no synthetic. There's no crazy nothing. It's just the stock set 358. Tomorrow I'm selling the 350. That's it. That's all they're doing. What what, what happened when they lost? Uh, they lose. So they what? just take the loss and come back. So they can roll it, but they don't show their holdings. So right. I we can't tell if they're rolling it. They can. What they're just not they're not gonna do is they're not gonna buy a put to back up the stock from falling. They're not taking any defensive position. All right, so if, all right, mm -hmm. so let's say for example they uh, they put three sixty like you said, mm -hmm. but then the stock mm -hmm. went south the other way. Three now it's three fifty, three forty, and just let's just make. So they they can roll it or they can take the loss. If they take the loss, do they own it? Or they no they, no 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 you can't own you can't own it you can't own it on a put settled. that's right no 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 the index is cash settled okay. that means if you lost ten points you're paying a thousand dollars okay the money just gets moved from me to you there's no stock oh, for the index okay. it's right. cash settles just straight up cash okay um so they can either a roll it or b take the loss. But what they cannot do is they cannot buy a put to protect themselves because they wrote that in their prospectus that they're not going to do any defensive moves. Yeah. Uh, is now, I mean, she implied that daily is a little bit better than, you know, because you have option to control it on a daily versus, you know, wait until the end of the month or wait until the end of the week. Uh, so the thing is about daily is there's one word it's called theta yeah. so theta is going to eat this option alive tomorrow uh, so let, let's look at this right so the 350 put is going yeah. for 17 dollars yep right the theta on the 350 put is seven dollars so by noon tomorrow it's already going to lose half its value and theta just increases. So by the end of the day, if we're not at 350, that put is going to be worth zero because theta is going to decay to put to zero by the end of the day. No matter what the price of that option, if we're not at 350, that option is worth zero at four o'clock when the market closes because theta is going to eat it alive. And the probability comes in right so if we're still sitting at 358 with one hour left that stock is not going to be worth anything because literally the market is going to have to drop almost a percent in one hour it okay. can with news but it doesn't so theta is going to eat that stock alive because nobody's going to be willing to buy that for no more yeah. uh, than one cent so theta is what with zero DTE, it's all about you have one day expiration. So if you're not right, that option is useless. Yeah. That is it. So you have when you sell zero DTE, you want one of five, one of four things to happen. You want the stock to go up real fast. You want the stock to go up real slow. You want the stock to stay flat. You want the stock to come down real slow. The only time you have a problem is when the stock comes down fast. Okay. So if we start selling off hard where there's no bounce, no nothing, like what we've been doing over the last week, 
Yeah. Yes. That's a problem. Because we're just selling off like we're not... There's yeah. nobody buying anything since the Fed came out. Okay. You see, that's when you're in the you're in the problem because there's nobody buying anything. Sure, sure. But if people are buying, then they're holding up the stock. So it's a race to the it's a race to the end of the day, right? So yeah. what you need is you need it to be slowly coming down. So it's just a race to the end of the day. Are they going to get to 350 before four o'clock? You don't want them to be 350 by 11 o'clock. Yep. Okay, that makes so sense. It, it's so, just a race and theta wins a lot of the time based on the information you 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 have here uh, do you see this as a competitor to yield max or you see it as a just a total separate separate thing it's it, it's it's a competitor but it's a different strategy mm -hmm. right but you're still facing the same type of volatility mm -hmm. so look at why i say that now is you don't want to have a bunch of all your stocks correlating in the same type right so if the market's going down this thing is going down yep. so this is the exact this is the exact market right this is the nasdaq yep. if you have the nasdaq that mean you're you have tesla microsoft everything yep. so you can be over over sector size that's a word you understand what i'm saying because you have tesla microsoft and apple and this thing of Tesla, Microsoft, and Apple. So yeah, oh, because Yield Max have the Nasdaq also. This thing is also the Nasdaq. Yeah, yeah. So this is the this is all the Yield Max funds technically combined together. Yeah. So essentially, buying this is buying the Yield Max fund. <laughs> no, no, it's a different strategy. Yeah. Right. Different. Yeah. That's why I say it's a different strategy uh -huh. on the upside. On the upside, it's a different strategy. But uh -huh. on the downside, everybody takes the whole downside. Yeah. I don't no, remember they said no defensive, right? Yeah. So we're all going down. But on the upside, Yield Max will make more money per day than this fund will. Because they're 5 to 15% above. Because the remember, the most they can make is 0.25 a day. Yeah. While with, you know, let's say Tesla spikes up, we get in our 15%, yeah. this thing only gets 0.25. Yep. You see what I'm saying? But so 0.25 it's a over, over a 20 days period, not 30 days. Uh, a lot of, it's 20 days because of trading days, 21 days or something like that. Yeah, well, I'm just saying in a one day, yeah. one day, let's say Tesla, let's say Tesla opens at 2.44 tomorrow. At the open, they sold a put mm -hmm. for 0.25 and we sold a synthetic with a call at 15. Mm -hmm. It spikes up, we get our 15%. The most they can get is 0.25. Okay. That, unless that's unless they did, you see what I'm saying? So yep, yep. it's a different strategy because they would have to go sell new puts to get another 0.25 again. Like they yeah. can't get no more. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Based on their thing. So uh, all right, this so, is a different type of strategy. All right. So the question of the day is this. For, for everyone in the room, anybody can answer this question, not just Kenny. Would you buy QQY and and Jeff? JPY. So those are two, the two one. QQY track the Nasdaq, and JPY tracks um, track the S and P 500. Now, disclaimer: I I already bought it, so I already own. Uh, I'll tell you how many. Uh, I think I own like four or five. Give me a second. Let me just go to my portfolio. And so I own Chuppy. I own one. But I put another one, so by tomorrow I will own two. Uh, I'm gonna keep buying them, and then QQY, where is QQY? Uh, what order? What I don't. All oh, right here, QQY. I own four, so by tomorrow will be five. I'm gonna keep buying every day. I buy one of these guys, so I, I essentially buy two share every day until the dividends come out so by the time the dividend come out i should have at least 20 something share uh, as a as an example as a test the reason i buy it is just i keep buying one every day essentially i'm riding the i'm riding the ship down so as, as the price go down i'm also riding it down instead of just buying one lump sum all right so with that in mind what, what you, what's your take on it is it something you're interested in owning or 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 not um, I'm just going to say this answer before I leave. I put 1.5% of my account in it, which is basically $2,000, and let it ride. I got 100 shares. Oh, you already did that too, huh? 
Oh yeah, yeah, I already bought it. I, I know exactly what the strategy is. I used to trade it back in the day. Okay, so, so I know you, exactly you understand the strategy, doing. huh? All right. Yes, I completely understand the strategy, and I completely understand there's no defensives, uh -huh. all this stuff. Once you understand it, then you make a decision. If you don't understand it, you need to understand it before you think of buying it. Okay. So I already bought a hundred shares. I throw it in the corner. I'm not worried about it. Yep. Uh, does anybody else in this room in Discord right now or in YouTube just text it? I'll read. I'll, I'll click on YouTube here to read. Uh, did anybody buy QQY and SPY? I'm just curious. Uh, am I the only? Am I the, so? Me and Kenny, we bought it. Uh, did anybody else own QQY and JPY? Here's something, uh, uh, Kenny. You're probably not aware. Well, go ahead and type it in. I can read chat and. Uh, I'm reading in the chat right now. Uh, somebody told me that JPJ from Yieldmax also managed the QQY. Yes. How do you? How do you? I, I does don't. He, does he sleep? No, you sit at your computer, man. That's your job. So he sits at his computer. Just think of it. Um, right. If you're sitting at your computer, once you set up a trade on Tesla, like you just set an alert, man, and you go do something else. Like he got other <laughs> people in the office who can watch that shit all day. <laughs> So let me. Uh, how would you manage a team? I don't understand how. How do you? Let's say Jay. Let's say you work with Jay. How would he manage it? Jay does all when, the like top level trading, or and you do when, the low level trading, or or like you so, sit in the board. So when they set these trades up, right? Yeah. yeah. It's all on paper, whatever. We're buying. We're, we're establishing a synthetic. If today the stock is at this, that means we're up eighty percent. We're gonna close it out. So all these permitters are on the paper already. So when you hand it off to Joe Smuck in the office, he knows that if Tesla spikes up to this, he needs to write up a jelly roll and bring it to you for you to approve. You see what I'm saying? So everything is in there to control the trade. Yeah. If this thing happens, you need to call me. Uh -huh. So he goes and look at something else. That's crazy, He's man. Not He's not watching the charts. That's what a fucking new intern, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, okay. it's it's for real, right? Yeah. What, what if, why am I doing that when we got an intern? Yeah, Jay, Jay is busy. Over here. Jay busy. Yeah, yeah. So okay. they got a new guy. So yeah, the new guy. He just does this, and then he gets the one from this QQQ from the company. They want a position at the bell, so he already seen a position. He already seen a trade. Write it up, and he give it to them. Because he's like an, I don't know if he's a direct trader there. He might be an advisor. So he just looks at it, give it to them, and they put that shit on. Right? Everything is in the trade, yeah. and you follow it. It's all mechanical, right? You, yeah. they, these trades are mechanical. This happened, you do this. Oh, before I leave. So I was talking to Andrew and a bunch of guys this morning. Yeah. I was talking about the way something that Dre did with Yilmax. Yeah. And the one thing I didn't think of was... Um, remember I was saying that he should sell these other calls and he should sell these other calls. Yeah. Remember he can only sell five to 15% out yeah. of the money. So I think that is what causes him to sell certain calls underneath the basis because he can only sell five to 15% out, out the money. Mm -hmm. That's what I was, that, that's what I was, I was looking at this week and I was like, why is he selling the the 257 that he has right now on Tesla. I was wondering why is he selling that? And it's because he can only sell five to 15% out of the money. So I think that is what is causing him to do that. All right, um, that's fair. With that, with that being said, love you guys. I'm out. I got fucking stuff in the morning. Sorry, to, sorry for cussing. I got stuff in the morning. No, I, I, I got it. Me, me too, man. Uh, so yeah, hey, have a good, have a good Navy day. Yup, I will, man. Peace, love you guys. All right, take care. All right, that was interesting. I love talking to Jay, uh, not Jay, uh, to Kenny. Uh, he he gives you some good insight. So based on that, now uh, Kenny is our uh, resident expert here on option trading, and you know. At, you know, at, at, we value his wisdom a lot. A lot of us, uh, um, you know, put a lot of, you know, we buy, sell, trade, you know, uh, we don't do option, but we, we, we make a lot of decision on which type of Tesla, 
uh, type of Yale Max to buy, uh, you know, we value his opinion on. So he actually owned QQQY and JPY. So that's interesting, uh, interesting discovery. I did not know he owned that. So he's he's already into it because he he's comfortable with it. He understands they're gonna make some money, and I I believe they're gonna make some money too. But I just don't know what the percentage is. But here's the deal. As long as the percentage is more than 40 cents, why 40 cents? That's Jeppy. More than 20 cents, uh, which is you know, uh, oh, what I forgot what I forgot what uh, QYLD is. Give me a second. Yeah, QYLD is 17 cents. So if it's more than 20 cents, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, the only thing, the only thing, my concern is, is I'm I'm paying nineteen dollar to get seventeen, you know, twenty cents or higher, but I would like to pay nineteen dollars and get you know forty cents or higher, but uh, that's that's my only thing. So depending on what what to pay, uh, remember when when Oak O A L K first came out, it was the first time Yield Mac Tesla, they came out with seventy four cents, when they first come out and one dollar one dollar. And Tesla was Tesla was very similar. Now the reason why people don't understand this, they came up with a dollar. Now this dividend payout um, X day was uh, January 10, but this product came out in November. So they have December. They have all of they have some a uh, couple week, uh, one week of November, a couple weeks of November. They have all the summer. Granted, most of December is holiday, uh, so you got you got some of November. All of December and then to to generate uh, a dollar so on an opening day, but then you look at some other company. Uh, let's say for example, like I remember when Apple came out, it didn't do that well. So Apple came out with twenty eight cents, even though it didn't do that well, it was still better than a lot of company, a lot of ETF out there, and uh, so that's yeah. So that's why I. Um, as long as I pay more than forty cents, I am good. I am. I'm going to be very happy with uh, with uh, with QQY and then uh, Spy. There's another one coming out. I forgot what the name of it. There's actually a couple com a couple of uh, uh, ETF. The other one is. Did they list it yet? No, they haven't listed yet. It's like I something. IJMI or something like that. It track Russell to the sun. What what is it? Russell R E Russell to the sun. I think. I didn't hear. I didn't understand. What can you spell it out? Because it's four letter. Just just put in chat. Yeah. So they're coming out. There's three. There's gonna be three fun. Uh, I probably end up owning all three of them. The the part I like about it, if they pay sixty six cents. To 80 cents, oh my god, I'll be so happy. I'll be so happy. Because then it'll be a true competitor. So now I get I get um, essentially I'm gonna have a different payout period. Did somebody type it already? Oh I I W M Y, -Y. yep. No, thank you. I appreciate it. It's the Russell 2001. Yep. Andrea, thank you. Andrea Johns, thank you for telling that. Yeah, it tracked the uh, the Russell 2000. So I'm excited. I cannot wait. This is for 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 Sunday. This is one of the things that I am excited about. And uh, I'm I'm curious to hear uh, the rest of you guys. You guys have any opinions on this? Or before I change to the next the next topics here. Anybody in there? Okay, um, so the next the next topics here, uh, I I want to throw out some proposal. We haven't really talked much about uh, other type of dividends. Uh, they're not they're not ultra high like yield max, but they're still good for the industry, and they're stable. I think uh, I think Phantom Twenty Two, she mentioned it a little bit about you know the value of owning. Uh, some other one, and and um, and uh, you look at my portfolio here, in my Charles Schwab, I own a lot of REIT, a lot of REIT. So w one of the things that I want to I want to 
throw out there and propose to you all is to take a look at this. And I just put there are there are three reads right now that's on my radar. The first one is O. Uh, I only own a couple of share right now, but I'm going to try to grow this. The reason why because it's it's all time low right now. The 50 52 weeks low is fifty one dollar and fifty one. $51.51 and the closing price was $51.56. There is opportunity to buy this thing at $51 and it's the lowest, you know, in, in 52 weeks, in, in, in one year, in the entire year. The last time this thing was that low, uh, it's probably in 20, somewhere around in 2020. Uh, no, yeah. Somewhere around May, May 2020-ish. That was the last time it was that low. Oh no. It, yeah, it appeared that way. Yeah, somewhere around this time frame. So it hasn't been this low in a long time. So if you're waiting for the price to be lower, then yeah, then you're gonna wait another long, another two year cycle. This is one of those AV two, three years. The reason why before I, before I even start my dividend investment journey, I knew about this company way before, uh, be, I knew about uh, realty income way before uh, of this, uh, before I even talk about dividends and stuff like that. They're not a high paying dividend, but it's just a great company to own uh, before they, um, uh, at the lowest price. That's, this, this is just my opinion, uh, you know, and I'm not an expert by any means. It's just, just my opinion. I'm curious what anybody else have to say about this. Am I the only one who shared the same value in this? What do you think, Phantom? No? Alright. Okay, so that's the first one. The next one um, is to, for consideration is which I own also. Oh, I'm sorry is uh, ADC uh, it's another another company another real estate REIT company and um, it's also it's in the low pretty much all the real estate REIT right now is in the all-time low so you got you got O, you got ADC it's also it's all-time low and um, I mean you just look at six months here's a year I mean at one point it was $75 a year ago back in January and then now it's 56 and you look at five years the last time it was 56 was probably during COVID that's crazy that is crazy uh, another great company opportunity to buy and own and this is a profitable company it, I only I only buy profitable company if you don't make profit I'm not gonna I'm not gonna own it so uh, except I'm a residential is the only one but I, I, I just do that just the harvest the harvest it um, yeah so so that's ADC the other one is Vici VICI um, I I like VICI a lot and they also drop below this is five-year plan and it's still on a high side I mean it, it has the potential to go down to 17 or, or maybe lower than that, you know, because if so far the trend, everybody going down to 2020 price. So this thing is just fighting it. Man, Vici is making making names for itself with with their with their casinos, and they just they just kicking kicking butts. And uh, so there's there's some opportunity there. So these are these are three none what you call. Um, ETF, you know, something separate from yield max. But the, the other thing but I like about these three is that when you buy these three, is they give you margin of 30%. Remember, when I own nothing but Tesla and Clip and Bitto, I have zero margin. I have $46,000 in my account. Uh, it's 44 now uh, because I'm, I'm losing just left and right. It's actually more. I bought, I bought more shares. So this is not the right number. It's 46. I haven't updated this. So, um, yeah, but I couldn't, 
even though I have like almost fifty thousand dollars in my account, because of margin call, uh, well, not margin call, because of margin, I couldn't, I, I couldn't even borrow. I couldn't borrow any money. I have zero money to borrow. So because because my three stock essentially they are uh, they are one hundred percent margin maintenance, maintenance, one hundred percent maintenance. But when you own these these guys here, this is one thing I learned about margin. If by owning these three by owning these guys, I essentially open up my margin a lot more. I able to borrow money. I can borrow a thousand dollar now just by because I own a lot of these these guys. All right, that's some that's something to I just want to share with you. And this is one thing I learned. I kind of discovered from it. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so Phantom say it's very steady, and uh, yeah, and Phantom Twenty Two said she collect old dividend monthly has never reduced its dividends. Let me see what's the dividend for always. Um, I think it's like twenty two dollars something like that. Yeah, twenty five dollar, and um, yeah, it is a pretty good dividends, man. As the price come down, the yield's gonna go up, and twenty five cents. You know, steady Eddie. The only thing, the only thing I don't like about uh, reality is just the price is kind of high for me. That's it. I could have buy a whole bunch of Tesla, whole bunch of Clip, whole bunch of you know OARK, whole bunch of Apple or or the Facebook, the new one. Um. So these are three. These are three something for you to consider. They're not high yield, but they pay good dividends. They study eddy. They give you money, and and it's a consideration for out there. All right, within the yield max, within the yield max, um, I want to throw this out for consideration for for yield max. Uh, all right, let me see. If I can find it real quick. Okay, and fly. Take a look at this. Um, it paid forty-one cents, right? So Nfly is Nfly may be a potential to be the next OARK. Uh, that the price is going to come down. So that's something to think about. Uh, you know, if you haven't buy any yield max, let's say you don't like Tesla, you don't like OARK, or you max out. And like in my case, I max out on Tesla already. Um, because I 80% of my portfolio is in Tesla already, so I want to buy something else. So then, you know, I, I I'm starting to build up on OALK, so my precision OALK. I show you where where is OALK? Um, OALK. Here you go. So I'm starting to build some precision. I only bought four shares. That I mean I bought four days ago because I bought one every day, and um, or four business days ago. So I'm trying to grow OARK, not buy any more Tesla because I'm already at I'm already at 80% Tesla. So I don't want to I don't I don't want to keep increasing that number. So I'm gonna buy OARK, and the next one I'm thinking about getting is Nfly. Uh, so this is something great because if you if you buy something like this, this is what I should have done with Tesla. I should have just buy down with it, you know, as 1662 today, 1661 tomorrow. Uh, the day after it's 1650, you know, and then 1640 when it hit 15 dollars. It didn't matter because I'm just buying down with it. Uh, I think this is a great stock to go buy down with it. So by the time it hit 14 dollars, 13 dollars, it's not as a shock for me. For me, it's extreme shock right now. My account because my my average, my average in yield max is. I'll show you my holding here real quick. Uh, my average for yield Tesla is 1598. It's 1598. I, I couldn't even bring this price down. I bought 50 share. Oh, 22 share. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, not 50. I bought clip for 50 share. I bought 22 share of Tesla. Okay. Right, in the last month, and it went from 16 to 1598. That's how much it moved. It moved like literally a penny, like two pennies or two pennies. It's crazy how, how, how 22 share did not even move the needle. So that's why, that's why. So with, with that in mind, I'm just going to, there's a potential to take a look at Nfly and just work your way down with that. So Nfly is, 
is, uh, is another good stocks out there. And uh, I'm gonna put that on the list for those who thinking about, you know, just kind of new and, you know, wanna get into something. Now you gotta believe in Netflix. If you don't believe in Netflix, don't buy Enfly. Well, this is how I keep telling about Netflix. Um, what's Netflix competitor? They don't have a competitor. The only reason why Netflix price is, is yo-yo because the reason their price is yo-yo down, up and down like this, it's not because the competitor, it's, it's just, they just self-destruct themselves. It's their fault. They did it to themselves. You know, like, like for example, here, it was like 600 something dollar, right? And all of a sudden they, they want to release a, a video called Cutie and that thing just dropped. <laughs> People are like, I'm, I'm not watching Netflix. They got, they got into the politics, the same thing as Disney. They got into the politics and then, and then it alienated half of the audience. And then as a result, people don't want to watch anymore. And, um, but Netflix is going to come back. Going to come back because they have no competitor. They own, I mean, I watch a lot of Korean show. Now Netflix has more Korean show than the Korean station. So it's, it's crazy. Um, it's just crazy how uh, there's no competitor. So Netflix is, you have to believe in Netflix. Otherwise, don't buy Enfly if you don't believe in Netflix. So that's something to think about. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is coin. A lot of people, uh, not coin, Coinbase, this is it, but they're con Connie, C-O-N-Y. All right, so Connie is, go coin is it's trending down, just like everybody else is all trending down. So because of that reason, Corny, C-O-N-Y, is dropped to $18.62. If you watched my video months ago, uh, or weeks ago, I, I, I made the same statement. I was like, why do you feel the need to buy coin, coin uh, Yield Max Corny, at $20? You don't need to buy at $20. Because every single yield Mac except NVDY, they all they all at least at some point they demonstrate the price coming down. Okay, so this is this is the argument that I'm making. If you worry about clip, so for those out there argue about this, remember, I own a lot of clip. Clip is my second biggest holding, and I love clips. But the anti-clip people, they talk about or clip nav erosion. Look at that nav erosion there. Look at that. Would you blind? You can't see that? No, I'm, I'm not blind. I can see it. But I didn't buy it $25. I bought it at $18. Somewhere around here at $18. And I've been collecting dividends ever since. And the price is eight, you know, it's, it's only a few penny off, you know, a few, you know, few pennies off. So, I'm not worried about nav erosion. Well, it, I, I mentioned that, um, um, but for some reason, people rush in to buy corny. For whatever reason, why, I have no idea, but they rush to buy it. And they went, went and rushed to buy it at 20, 25, 20, 11. I mean, it started off. On 15 at 20 and it just it just dropped Dude, just dropped the whole time and it finally went up and it went up to 2134 and then and now came back down but there's people buying at at high price so if you if you if you believe in this uh, erosion theory concept then don't buy it when it on an IPO don't buy it when it's on the release price no big deal if you if you buy it and then just just come down. All right. So um, I've been tracking yield max for a long time. I've been tracking yield max for a long time. 
this is just a theory. I don't, I don't, I don't have any expertise. I don't have any numbers and data. It's just basing on just looking at charts after chart after chart after chart. At some point, you have to say this trend that every one of these yield max here is heading down. What? Why can't it be? Uh, let me just look at Apple for example. Why? Why not? Uh, the price of yield max should be somewhere around between fourteen and and, and sixteen dollar, maybe eighteen dollar. I'm willing to go eighteen, but somewhere around fourteen and sixteen. That's just my theory. Because Tesla, I'm just watching Tesla. I just I just don't understand uh, now. One would say, well, Tesla is a very volatile uh, stock, and it's one of the reason why. They um, they just struggling to get out of the fourteen dollars. They're just struggling to get out. They've been they've been in this they've been in this rat since August. Uh, they've been they've been getting once they went under fifteen from August eleven. They've been struggling ever since. They have they haven't come back up yet. And um, I don't know what it is. I, I wish I, I wish I can pinpoint what exactly it is and uh, what's causing it. Um, is it the market? Is it Tesla? Is it the noise? Is it is it option trading itself or is it J? We, we don't really know what it is. Um, it's hard to pinpoint it, but it's Tesla it just it has a hard time coming back up and therefore one of my theory I have is the rest of the stock, it's it managed by the same people. It has the same X date, same option date, the same procedure, same rules, same everything apply. If everything is applied, those things should come down too. That's just my that's just my theory. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Somebody 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 share some wisdom with me. All right. Does anybody have any opinions on this? All right. So those are those are some of the things I'm considered for for tomorrow's shopping list uh, that I, I I need to take a look. I already own I except Nfly, uh, except Corny. I own majority of the things I've discussed it today. Uh, is any? Let me go look at channel uh, real quickly here. I get I get all the downside of Tesla is down. Yep. Oh, hey guys, uh, it's been a, a blast, a huge fun. I normally on Sunday and Thursday, it's it's only seven to nine, and it's nine ten now. Um, I've been going over like twenty minutes, thirty minutes. Sometimes I went over like over an hour, um, but I try to keep it consistently the same. To in my opinion, I rather I rather be consistently the same and be stabilized uh, than. Uh, you know, then just go out there and do three hour brief and, uh, you know, uh, podcast or whatever. I don't know what you call this, making YouTube video. Uh, but I like this, I like this format where I get the community involved. I, I always want to get the community involved. I don't like it where I'm just monologuing uh, the whole time. I want to, I want to have discussion, talk, and, and, but here is where we made the money, the most money. It's really not me talking. Actually, there's a sub group within this group. That's the Discord. There's people in Discord talking to each other. So you have to come to Discord to see that. And then there's people within YouTube. They talking to each other real time in the YouTube chat. Uh, so there's a lot of people chatting and, and throwing ideas. Those are separate from what I am doing uh, in terms of live broadcast. So, and that's that's one thing I love about it. It's like three different groups. They got the, the Discord group. The YouTube chat group, and then there's me talking to the audience and talking to whoever come into the the voice channel. So um, I I really like that. Where I think where we made the most money is actually the subgroup 
the Discord, and the YouTube. Uh, that's where a lot of the information, get dialogue, uh, get exchanged. Yeah. So if you hear that music in the background, that means my show is coming to the end. I want to say thank you so much. Uh, uh, do you chat or talk in Discord? We do. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, Discord has a voice feature. And, and, and also you can post picture, videos, and all that kind of stuff. All right. Well, I yeah, like I said, I really appreciate it, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Please comments. Most important thing. And um, uh, with that, I want to say, hey, have a good, uh, good night, everyone. And if you're waking up, if you're in Asia, like Australia, then I want to say, uh, all right. Let me send a link here real quick. Give me a second, I'm just getting a link here for... Alright, so there's a link to Discord. You can join the bigger discussion. Okay, F U uh, oh F W. Um, hey, welcome to Discord. If, if you uncue the mic, you can we can communicate. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the live stream. I'll see you all later. Peace out. Take care.